finding a comfortable seat. And then just notice if, if you like to move. Move in such way that it just comes naturally. You may be rocking yourself from side to side, forwards and back. Seated cat cows might feel good. You might decide to bring movement into your wrists or fingers as if you're kneading dough in such way. And maybe at the elbow creases, bending and straightening at the elbows. Maybe the shoulders, shoulder rolls, one shoulder at a time or both shoulders together. Maybe shoulder shrugs might feel nice. So anything to bring a bit of movement, a bit of juiciness back into our body, into our limbs. Of course, this meditation is only half an hour, but it's long enough. So just a bit of, a bit of kind of organic movement, any sort of movement that the body is craving first thing in the morning. And once the need for movement slowly, slowly, slowly leaves the body and leaves the mind, you might notice that the body is craving to maybe sit on something. That could be a chair, a couch, a bed, a, a prop of some sort, a little pillow, a blanket. Again, you don't have to sit cross-legged if you don't want to. This is easy pose, cross-legged might feel comfortable. Or you might decide to sit with your legs straight in front. You might decide to sit in hero pose kind of sitting on your heels, that might feel better. As long as the plane of your pubic bone and your tailbone is in one line, so you're not kind of shifting too far back or too far forward. It's this plane between the pubic bone and tailbone is in one line, and your sit bones, the ischium bones, are in one line as well. There's a diamond shape between the pubic bone, tailbone, sit bone to sit bone. We're just kind of trying to find a diamond sitting on it just so ever perfectly. And then by making a comfortable foundation, um, the practice might go smoother, easier, more successful, whatever that means to, to your mind, to your body. If you are used to meditation, this might be a bit of a different experience, or you might notice that, no, oh, this is just like any other regular meditation. We can close our eyes, we can place our palms on our thighs, facing up or down. Usually in the evening meditations, my palms are facing down, index and thumb touching into chin mudra, mudra of grounding. In morning meditations, I'm into yana mudra, gyan mudra. It's the same thing, just palms facing up, index and thumb touching. And the idea behind the index and thumb is just brings more concentration. So you pick whichever feels comfortable. And then if you wear glasses, if you wear a maybe headband or any sort of object in your head and face or your body that holds tightly, you might like to soften it a little bit. Um, again, an elastic band on the hair might be a bit of a distraction, so you might like to take that off or earrings, rings, watches, any sort of accessory. So I call this meditation the three gates meditation, the three gates meditation. So if possible, just visualizing three gates. They could be in a row, they could be on a path, they could be in different parts of the world or different colors, textures, different heights. different material. So there are three gates of communication, three gates of communication. So your gates might change a little bit 
or they might stay the same. Or today you might notice that as you communicate, you're going to come into, on your path, there'll be three gates that might arrive. The first gate will prompt you what you're going to say, is it true? Is it true? The second gate will prompt you, is it necessary? And the third gate will prompt you, is this kind? What you're about to say is this kind. And if so, all three gates will open and the path or the way of communication opens up and the words will come out and your listener will hear them with compassion, with kindness, and will speak to their truth. Start by going through our koshas. If you are used to the way I meditate, you'll know about koshas. And if you're if you're not sure, I will explain, of course. The uh, first kosha is anamaya kosha. Ana means food. It's a Sanskrit word. Maya means illusion or ignorance. And kosha means sheath or body. In Anamaya Kosha, we have five senses. Just noticing the senses here. You might like to start with the sounds around you. So starting with the sounds furthest away, the sounds on the street, if you're able to hear, or maybe even the absence of sound. Sounds in the building, the house, the dwelling you're in at the moment. The sounds in the room you are in at the moment. The walls, the ceiling, the ground, the furniture. sounds closest to you, your body, your breath, your heartbeat, maybe when you swallow, maybe the belly's making sounds. We'll come to the temperature and the textures around us. Just noticing the textures around your body, again, your clothing, your hair maybe against your scalp or your neck or your shoulders or arms. And the temperature around your body, the difference between your fingers and your armpits, the tips of your toes and the groin, the outside edges of our lips and the insides. Uh, of the lips or against our teeth inside the mouth. The temperature inside the body compared to the temperature outside the body. If you are not used to holding mudras with your fingers or palms, at one point, you will not be sure if your fingers are touching or not. And then mind is just kind of playing little tricks for us. And sometimes the mind is like a child, um, kind of mischief here. And so don't pay attention. They're either touching or not touching. It really doesn't matter. So these are all textures. You notice the smells around you. You're breathing in and out, in and out, noticing the smells around.
smells. You might dive into your taste buds. Hmm, the taste buds this morning on your tongue, the tip of the tongue, sides of the tongue, back of the tongue. If your eyes are closed, we'll go upwards beneath our eyelids, noticing the light and the shadows, the colors, and the eyes might be open. You can do the same. Just make sure the eyes are not wandering around. Your gaze point is, is still, is soft. Here we'll go a little bit deeper. This is the next layer of this human body or human being. It's pranamaya kosha, prana. Prana means breath, life force, this energy that moves through us. Noticing our breathing pattern. Here, simply observing if you're breathing shallow or deep, fast or slow. Does the breath move all the way down into the belly? Is it just in the chest and ribcage? There is no right or wrong. You're just simply observing. Like a mother, like a father, like a caretaker. compassionate, kind, no judgment. There's a deeper layer called mano maya kosha. Mano maya kosha. Mano means mind. It's our thought body. You'll notice this thought. A thought has arrived. Label it for what it is. Allow it to pass and wait for the next thought. A sense might bring you a thought, a sound, a smell, a vision, Maybe not being able to see because the eyes are closed. You'll label it for what it is and you'll allow it to pass. You have found yourself a little bit deeper. And this deeper layer is called Vigyana Maya Kosha. Vigyana Maya Kosha. Vijnana means knowledge. It's the body of intellect, the place that you're aware of all the five senses. You're aware that you're breathing or maybe you stop breathing. You're aware that you're thinking or maybe you stop thinking. And then you'll bring everything back together, okay? I'm supposed to stay here, make sure my body's comfortable, my breathing has its own rhythm in a comfortable manner. My thoughts are coming and going, coming and going. And somewhere here, you might find yourself in this uh, deeper layer, it's the fifth layer of being human. It's Ananda Maya Kosha, Ananda Maya Kosha. And it's that bliss body, a place of contentment, joy without reason. It's a place of void, void of physical body, of the emotions, of senses, of time and space, of thoughts coming or not coming, it's just beyond all this. It takes practice to get there more often. It might arrive, it might not, and the goal is not there. The goal is just simply being present.
So if possible, we'll come back to that second kosha, that pranamaya kosha, pranamaya kosha, energy body or breath body. We'll come and sit at the tip of our nose, the opening of the nostrils, and simply breathe in and out, noticing the change of temperature as we breathe in, as we breathe. We breathe in and out, in and out. You might notice that the nostrils might get a little bit wet and they get a little bit dry, a little damp, a little bit dry as we're breathing in, as we're breathing out. As we breathe in and out, you might even feel cilia or, or the hair inside your nostrils move with breath. I notice the edges of the nostrils wide and move apart from each other as you breathe in. As you breathe out, oh, they soften. Openings of the nostrils might open, kind of feel thin as you breathe in and as you breathe out, they feel maybe flat and a nice and juicy, luscious nostril ever-changing, ever-changing, present moment constantly changes, a new present moment arrives. And now follow this next breath, go a little bit deeper and find yourself at your throat area around your vocal cords, around the uvula, a little baby tongue. Breathing in and out, in and out. You can notice dark, you can notice light as it passes through your throat. There is prana coming not only through our nostrils. If we part our lips, there might be prana coming out through our lips, through our ears, through our eyes, our tear ducts, through the crown of our head, the fontanelle, the soft spot at birth, which is not soft. You can imagine light through all these areas, through all these openings energetically moving through the throat. We're just breathing in and out, in and out. Cool air, the warm air. We'll go a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, you might find yourself at your heart center, at your sternum, the bone between your rib cage on either side, or the manubrium bone right above the sternum, attached to your collarbones, never-ending smile sitting there. As we breathe in and out, breathing into the chest and rib cage, into our armpits, into the back of the heart, shoulder blades. If you're leaning too far forward, you're going to lean back a little bit. If you've leaned too far back, you'll come forward a little bit. If you notice you've tilted to the right or to the left, you'll find yourself back to center ever so gently, making these delicate, intricate movements. Once you've recentered yourself, you're going to find your breath again and drop into your belly. 
maybe into the solar plexus, maybe into the diaphragm if that feels most comfortable. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. The light, the opening shines or pours down into our throat, into the chest and rib cage, around the heart, front, sides, back, above, below. It goes all the way down into the diaphragm, the solar plexus, all the way down into the belly or organs, all the way down into the pelvic bowl, the pelvic dome, the pelvic floor, the perineum. We find the light all the way into our sit bones the area between pubic bone and tailbone, and the space that the body meets the ground beneath. There is light shining inwards, light shining outwards. And here's where we're going to bring the gates into this physical body, this energetic body. The first gate is truth. What I say, does it come from a place of truth? Is it true? And will it sit in a place of truth to the person that this is going to be spoken to? The second gate is necessity. Is this necessary what I say? The words that are about to come out of my mouth, my tongue, my beautiful lips, my face and my heart, are they necessary? Are they harmful? Are they kind? This is the third gate. As do these words come from a place of kindness? And where will they arrive or sit in a place of kindness? Soften our eyes, our eyelids, and the eyeballs softly go back into our skull, gently bobbing into the skull. Mm -hmm. Soft eyes, softening our cheeks, soft cheeks. Noticing our jaw joints, the masseter muscles, our true muscles, softening our jaw joints, dropping inside our mouth, oh, softening the tongue, the tip of the tongue. Marinating the tongue with kindness here. You might even notice the taste buds change, the textures change. You might notice you're salivating a little bit more. There's more fluids in your mouth. This softness, this nectar that has arrived, might drop into your chest or onto your chest or your heart. There's a softness around the heart into our chest, into the rib cage, again, like molasses, like honey. This nectar of kindness uh, drops down around the solar plexus, around our belly, around the pelvis, where we sit. Three gates of truth, necessity, is this necessary, what I'm about to say, and kindness, does it come from a place of kindness?
slowly, slowly come into a mudra called opening gate mudra, opening gate mudra. It's quite simple. It's just holding on to our left thumb with our right hand. So you'll kind of take your left thumb. With your right hand, you'll kind of grip onto your left hand. So all the fingers of your right hand will hold on to your left thumb. And then see if you can bring your right thumb and your left index finger to meet. The right thumb and the left index finger pad meet one another. And then left of the, the, your left fingers will kind of wrap around your right fist basically now, or your right hand. You'll have your palms facing yourself. You'll notice that you wrapped your four right fingers around your left thumb, your right thumb, and your left index finger are meeting one another. And the left, left of your, the rest of your left fingers have wrapped around the back of your right hand. So yeah, it's opening gate mudra. You can hold this at the heart center. You can bring this in front of your vision, above your head. You can place it on your lap. You can bring it close to your solar plexus, to your navel. left thumb is a seed sitting in your right palm. Your right fingers have wrapped around your left thumb. The word that's about to be spoken. Is there a truth in it? Is it necessary? And does it come from a place of kindness? At one point of the day today, you are going to meet someone that you have to say something to this person. It could be a compliment that comes from your heart. It could be something you've been waiting to tell this person for a while now. There is no judgment. There is no hoping for an outcome. I'll bring our hands maybe around the solar plexus area and then we'll gently open our eyes and look at our hands. Look at this mudra, how beautiful it is. Slowly one finger at a time, your right index finger, middle finger, ring and pinky will start separating or moving away and you'll notice the word that sits in your right palm, your thumb. Gently place a smile with gratitude for words that are about to come out of our mouth on this grand day, this new present, this new present moment that ever changes and makes this beautiful day. Bring our palms to heart center in Anjali Mudra, prayer mudra, or gratitude mudra. We'll bow our head to our hands, to our heart, to our body, to the ground beneath us to the walls around, to the sky above, and the universe within. Placing a smile onto our lips, opening our eyes and bowing to one another. Mm -hmm. Namaste, have a wonderful day.